a load of this. I suppose I ought to warn you, uh, Mr. Uh, Wiggis, that Class 4P is quite a, um, a sensitive class. Trouble? Well, in a way. Uh, their last teacher, Mr. Parrot, had, uh, well, a nervous breakdown, I suppose you call it. So I've heard. A rowdy lot, eh? Well, it's not as simple as that. They're not actually troubled as such. I suppose the problem really seems to be one particular child. Oh? Which one? His name's Boy. Brian Arthur Derrick Boys. Now, if you can sort him out, you'll have the gratitude of the whole teaching profession. Uh, thanks for joining us. Sit! I may be new to you, but I'm not new to teaching. Before we start, let me get one thing straight. I will not tolerate any messing around in my classroom. Which of you is boys? Half of us are, sir, the rest are girls. <laughs> Quiet! Not boys, boys. Brian Arthur Derrick boys. Oh, that's me. Is it? I've heard quite a lot about you. I've been checking the attendance register, boys. I see you were an hour late yesterday. Yes, sir. Our bus driver collapsed at the wheel. We had to wait for another bus. Fascinating. Luckily, I'm experienced at first aid, so I was able to deal with the situation until the ambulance arrived. I see. You were also late the day before yesterday. Unavoidable, sir. A mission of mercy. According to the headmaster, you claim your dog bit your gran, and you had to take it to the vet to get its teeth mended. <laughs> A tough old lady, my granny, sir. Well, I'm a tough old man, boys. Old, sir? Never. <laughs> You're staying after school. Staying, but, no sir... No buts. You're in detention. I'm going to fix you, boys. Now for another more pleasant matter. We have a new boy starting at the school today, and we are fortunate to be having him in this class. Like any child new to any school, he'll feel rather shy. I want you to make him welcome. That's probably him now. <coughs> Come in, Slob, and meet your new classmates. 4P, this is Edward Slob. He put you in detention. Not for long, you'll see. I'll have a meeting out of my hand. All I've got to do is find his weak point. If he's got one, everyone's got one. What do you reckon his weak point is? Being mistaken for a tank. <laughs> I'm off to find Wiggis' weak point. So what do you get up to after school? Well, I go for a swim most evenings. What do you do, Mr Wiggis? I love old cars. I always say a good car is like a good woman. Really? How interesting. Suppose you take your girlfriends out and polish them. What? Oh, a joke. <laughs> Very amusing. Actually, myself, I've got an NG. Perhaps one day you'd uh, come for a drive with me. Well, uh... Just a little spin. It's got an open top. Really? Just right for catching pneumonia? Of course, what I'd really like is an old Morgan. You know, one of those little green jobs. Fantastic machines. I do have a class. Of course. I'll see you later. The purpose of the simultaneous equation is an exercise in logic. Some of you are the owners of brains. The brain is made up of... Did you see this program on telly this Thursday evening? And BMX Street Star. What time? Half past eight. Oh, 
Yeah. My mum's got the other side on then. So do most people's mums. So I'm inviting everyone round to watch it in my house. The price of admission is something to eat. Big packet of crisps. Right. Smoky bacon or salt and vinegar. Well, what about you, Mum? She won't be there. She does about half a dozen evening classes. Thursdays, it's Brick Lane. Only me dad, and he won't mind. Quickly, eh? Now, don't forget, tomorrow I want you to bring in examples of how to apply simultaneous equations to practical everyday situations. Right, you may go. Quietly. Did I tell you that my dad's selling his old mortgage? What? But you, Dad, is very attached to it, I know. Still, you never know it, grown up. Dad, what's special about a Morgan? A what? A Morgan is a car. Oh, that? They're uh, collectors, sports cars, hand built. They're quite rare nowadays. Right. Oh, by the way, I've invited a few friends round to watch telly this Thursday evening. There's a programme on at half past eight on BMX Street Star. Well, you can just uninvite them. I'm having a special third world evening here on Thursday and that television's staying off. But you go to your Brickland class on Thursday. Not this week. Sarah Pattinson's just come back from her travels and she's going to be showing examples of different cultures to the third world study group here. This living room will be packed with primitive works of art. I'll be away on a business trip. You'll be back by Thursday. But this is BMX Street Star. I don't care if it's the parting of the Red Sea. Live. That telly stays off. Oh, but Mum... Now don't argue with your mother. But what about all the people I've got coming round? Well, they'll just have to look at primitive works of art. Oh, Grace, I can hardly contain my excitement. You should check with us first before you make these arrangements. Are you expecting anyone? No. Oh, neither am I. Go and see who that is. I'm not expecting anyone either. Go, Go and, and see, see who, who that, that is. is. I thought child slave labour had been abolished. Yes. Good evening. We are the children of the flowers. We are bringing good news to the people of this area. We wondered if we might stand here and give thanks. You can stand there and freeze for all I care. Wait! It didn't sink in at first. Did you say you bring good news? Does that mean you're, like, saving people? Well, yes, I suppose, in a manner of speaking. Then my prayers have been answered. You see, my parents are witches. Witches? What sort of witches? Bad ones. They use these strange carvings to carry out their witchcraft rituals. I've been trying to find the way to break them out of the hold it has over them, but I'd almost given up hope until you not. It is fate that has brought us to this door. Fear no more. We will release your parents. I'd hoped you'd say that. You free this Thursday evening at 8 o'clock. Ah, uh, boys. Yes, sir? <laughs> Did I hear you say the other day that your father was interested in selling a Morgan? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to raise my voice in class. Uh, no, no, that's uh, quite all right. It's just that... Um, this is a Morgan car. Yes, it's a sports car, hand-built. Mind you, it's an old one. 1953, I think. 1953? Actually, I, I might be interested in buying it. Oh? Yes, um, would it be possible to meet your father to discuss it? I could tell him that you're interested. Oh, I am. <laughs> Very interested. Very interested indeed. Hey, he might even drop the price if he knows it's for someone I know. Really? Not that I'd do this for many teachers in this school. Oh? No. Some of them I have a lot of trouble with. Oh. Yes. If it was a teacher I didn't like, I'd make sure that my father didn't sell it to them, no matter how much they offered. And my father takes notice of what I say. Does he? <laughs> then it's lucky that we get on, isn't it? Right. Give me 50 pence and I won't hit ya. That sounds a very fair offer. Do you take American Express card? Ah, oh, cash, eh? Nice to see the old traditions haven't died out. I've only got five pence at the moment. I'll pay the rest tomorrow. City, you do. So we've got you 
are you two, eh? What do you mean? He's been going around to everyone, threatening to beat them up unless he pay him 50 pence a week. How many has he got? With you, about 20. That's 10 quid a week. I wonder if he wants a business manager. Eh? Hey? I'd better do something about this. What? Leave that to me. Tell everyone who's paying the slug to meet me at dinner time. I've got an idea. Come on! Oh, no. Now, you all know me, greatest dodger in the school. Yeah. And why? Because yeah. I've got the best brain. Oh, <laughs> and it's brains that are going to get the slug off our backs. Now, I've got a plan. It's going to cost you. But, as I'm a fair person, I will only charge on a result. How much? When I put the slug out of action, then, and only then, you'll each pay me a pound. A pound? I'm paying the slug 50 pence a week at the moment, and this one pound will be a once and for all payment. It's a bargain. You can't lose. Yes, we can. What's your plan, then? That's a secret. Yeah. But rest assured, it will work. In the meantime, there will be some expenses. As oh, yeah. I'll, I'll need a down Always. payment of 10 pence from each of you. What for? Like I said, expenses. Weird. You can't put a good idea into practice on thin air, you know. If you ask me, it's all getting a bit expensive. Yeah. 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 If you prefer to pay the slug. Now, hang on a minute. No, no, no. Here you are. There you are. Yeah. Well, clever clogs, how are you going to stop slug? Like I said, I've got a plan. Already? You are wonderful. I intend to meet violence with violence. But he's enormous. You don't stand a chance. Not me. Physical violence is a real mugs game. But who else is there? The slug's the biggest kid in the whole school. I reckon he's the biggest kid in the whole universe. But who's the one kid in this school that no one ever bullies? Simon Spence. <laughs> Yeah. You are an idiot. You have a face like a... What's that word? Pig. You have a face like a pig. I'm only reading it. Your brain is thicker than pig's muck. Who put this in here? Someone who's interested in pigs, by the sound of it. Look in your box. Whoever did it may have left a clue behind. There's nothing in there. All right, then. What does the note tell us? It tells me I've got a face like a pig. Apart from that, it looks to me like the paper it's written on has been torn from the cover of an exercise book. Turn it over and see if there's a name on it. Simon Spinks. Form 2B. Heavens, he obviously wasn't thinking clearly when he put that note into your lunchbox. Fancy using a piece of paper with his name on it. I'll kill him! I'm sure he meant no harm, really. Where will I find him? I don't really know, but he's usually in the playground. I'd be careful of him if I were you. Simon Spinks out good and proper. He's got him in bits. Revenge is sweet. <laughs> it certainly is. I have some rather sad news for you. Yesterday afternoon, your new classmate, Edward Slog, met with a serious accident outside the school gates as he was leaving school. I'm afraid he'll be in hospital for some time. <coughs> right, you may go. 
By the way, boys. Have you been able to talk to your father yet about his, um, Morgan? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. He's still away on his business trip. Of course, of course. I, mean, I just wondered. I have written to him, though, asking him to phone me. So I should be talking to him any day now, and I'll tell him then. Fine, fine. Incidentally, um, have you got that maths homework I said to you last week? Oh, dear. I think I've forgotten it again. Ah, I see. Well, uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> now, this is a very fascinating piece of work. Note particularly the impression created by the knees. These are hunting knees. In fact, while I was over there, I recorded a jungle hunting call. I thought you might all be interested in hearing it. Oh, love it. Oh, good. Sounds like a doorbell in the background. It's a doorbell in the background. Probably small people. I'll go. This is usually Hello. Witchcraft will not triumph. We regret that owing to circumstances beyond our control, we are unable to show our advertised program BMX Street Style. Instead, we are showing a nature documentary, a day in the life of a mom, which we are sure you will enjoy. Oh, wait a minute, it may be interesting. By the way, there's a message for you from the hospital. What hospital? Slug wants to see you. Something about the note in his lunchbox. I hope for your sake you haven't upset him.
looks like he's going to be quite a handful, doesn't he, Mr. Boys? Now then, do you remember on Bot First This in the Mornings when we did our video storyboard competition? We asked you to design a video storyboard, and there is the winner, designed by Marcus and Justin, who you will meet shortly. They chose the track Love Is Reason by Aha. Now, a storyboard, basically, a sequence of pictures which show the shots that are going to make up the video. So 